For thousands of years, orchids have captured the imagination. Their unusual flowers have inspired artists, poets, and horticulturalists across the world. The orchids of the tropics have become famous for their intricate shapes and vibrant colors. But farther north, many of the estimated 250 species of orchids in the United States and Canada are fighting for survival and risk dying out with their beauty unseen. So knowing that over half of the species of orchids that occur in the U.S. and Canada are endangered is a red flag to us. It tells us that we really need to understand their ecology, we need to know how to conserve them, and we need to know how to restore them. Dennis Wiggum and his colleagues have spent more than three decades studying native orchids in the Mid-Atlantic. But saving biodiversity across the whole of North America required something on a larger scale. In 2010, Wiggum and other collaborators from the Smithsonian and the U.S. Botanic Garden teamed up to form a continent-wide effort to conserve native orchids. They called their network of researchers and botanic gardens the North American Orchid Conservation Center, or NAOC. Its mission, to ensure the survival of all native orchids in the U.S. and Canada. We have a series of goals, and we're going to reach those goals by establishing partnerships that are national in scope. We will work with our partners to eventually assure the survival of all of our orchids through a whole series of activities ranging from seed bank collections to collections of fungi that interact with orchids to actually figuring out how to grow and sustain orchids so that they can be used for education purposes as well as for restoration purposes. For the North American Orchid Conservation Center, ensuring the survival of all orchid species is no simple task, especially with the rich diversity of species they're trying to protect. There are many native orchids in peril. Some, like the dragon's mouth orchid, have already disappeared from Maryland. In Florida, they are struggling to protect the ghost orchid, a leafless orchid that haunts the Everglades. It is found nowhere else in North America. Another challenge for conservationists, orchids perhaps more than any other plants in the world have a deep and complex connection to the forest, particularly when it comes to the fungi they need to survive. One of the challenges that orchid seeds have to meet is that they're very small and they contain very little food nutrients. In order for the seeds to germinate and grow in nature, they depend on a symbiotic partner. It's actually a fungus that the orchid digests. It provides carbon and allows the seed to, uh, to germinate and grow. For NAOC to fulfill its mission, it will need support from outside. Initially, resources in the form of grants, contracts, and contributions will allow NAOC to hire a director, establish a national collection of orchid seeds and symbiotic fungi, and develop an interactive website for the public. Additional resources, including the establishment of an endowment, will assure NAOC's future success preserving our orchid heritage. The analogy that we like to use is that our native orchids are similar to the canary in the coal mine. It's the one group of plants that are sensitively adapted to the environment that they live in for a number of reasons, because of uh, specialized pollinators or fungi that they require at different stages in their life cycle. But the fact is, when the ecosystem starts to be degraded, the orchids are among the first plants that begin to disappear. The successful establishment and development of NAOC will assure the survival of the largest and most charismatic plant family on Earth.